Now, we're talking about this reaction here. Now, I forgot my little arrow, but you'll forgive me for that, I know. All right, temperature. We don't know the temperature of this, and that's an important consideration. Uh, problems will give temperature in situations like this or when we get to equilibrium. Don't let it confuse you. We're not using the temperature right now. We're dealing with rate law expressions, which deals only with rates and either partial pressures or um, molarities. Now, our temperature independent rate law doesn't specify K. So we had rate is equal to K times the partial pressure of NO squared times the partial pressure of H2. Now remember, can't use stoichiometric coefficients because this is not an elementary reaction. It's an overall. Now, the temperature dependence of a reaction is given in K. You can't see it in the rate law expression. We will see the mathematics of K later on, but that's where it's kind of hiding. So as long as I haven't specified K, then this rate law expression is valid at a variety of temperatures. Now, now, the next step is though to specify K, to determine K with units. Now, in order to determine K, remember, let's write this again. We have our rate is K times the partial pressure of NO squared times the partial pressure of H2. Now we did, or somebody did for us, we are evaluating four experiments and these experiments were performed at a constant temperature. That was a control variable, not an independent or dependent variable. So if T is constant, then K is constant for a given reaction. And that means we can use any one of these experiments to calculate K. I'm going to use the first one, but you're welcome to try two, three, or four and see that you get the pretty much the same number within any reasonable experimental error. So I'm going to plug in for rate of point six six is equal to K, my unknown. I know my partial pressure of NO, it's 400 squared times 150. And if you do that algebra, you get 2.75 times 10 to the minus eighth as your final answer there. I hope I did my algebra right. Guys, I've done that before, you've done it before, please, please, please let me know if I made an algebra mistake and we'll fix that. So now our temperature dependent, again, the temperature dependent is when we're specifying a K. And I'll be honest, AP, I've not seen many questions on this. They'll ask you for the rate law expression and then they'll ask you to calculate K and it'll be as simple as that. But I like to emphasize that temperature dependence issue of you know, where that shows up in our rate law expressions, okay? So that would now be temperature dependent. It's dependent on whatever that unknown temperature is that this experiment was performed, uh, the conditions of temperature. So let's go on. We've missed one thing here, and we certainly don't have room here to do it, so I'm gonna go to another slide, and we need to talk about the units of K. When I first started teaching, I didn't understand why we were kind of concerned about the units of K. It was just kind of ignorance or uneducated on my part. And, and then I realized that K will reveal our overall order. So if as scientists, if we're reading a paper, a, a research paper on kinetics, and the person reports their K value with units, or the people, then I can figure out what the overall order of that reaction must have been. So it does communicate some interesting information. Now, when we get to equilibrium, uh, we'll see that there's a little bit of division between AP and IB on the necessity of units for that, and we'll hold off that discussion. Now, uh, K has to provide units such that both sides of that rate law expression the rate side and then the K times the concentration of partial, partial pressure side have the same units. So in a sense, they're manufactured and yet they're manufactured in a way that communicates. So here's what we do. This is the um, general formula. We're going to do one over time 
uh, because rate has time in the denominator and the concentrations clearly don't supply that. So K has to provide the, t the time uh, unit for us. Now I'm going to just shift to molarity here. And I think it, you'll, most of your stuff will be in molarity. And then we'll state what our units were in terms of our partial pressures. So it's going to be molarity to the, uh, to the sorry about that, overall order minus one. Now, the reason we do that is because rate would have molarity per time. And so we want to eliminate all molarity terms except one. So if we divide by the overall molarity minus one, we leave behind in the numerator one molarity term. Now, I don't like my units in a denominator. I think it's kind of awkward to see the one slash um, for a unit. So I like to put mine as time to the minus one times molarity to the minus our overall order minus one. And that would be what we would have for our units. Now, if we looked at our particular example, we had third order overall, and our units were tor or partial pressure, or excuse me, millimeters of mercury, and I'd accept either. I, I tend to like tor, I think it's just a little easier to write, and it doesn't look like you're putting an element symbol into the middle of it. So in our case, if you look back at your data, the time was seconds, so it'd be seconds to the minus one. And then we would write tor to the, T-O-R-R, -R, sorry, Torricelli, that wonderful little dead guy who studied this for us. Tor to the minus three. So in here, I need to put three minus one. So it'd be minus two. Okay, so those would be our units. Now, some of my students have a, a tough time with this. We'll do this again. And our units for K are very, very important. The two, I, it seems to me most common time I see units requested on an AP test and given a point for them are with the rate constant and with entropy. And it's because both of those units communicate understanding of the underlying principles and concepts involved. And so you really need to wrap your mind around those units. Let me try another way for you that some of my students like. Some of them like to, to follow patterns instead. And there is a pattern to these that I think can be a helpful way to learn them. And I, I'm fine with either way as long as you understand the underlying concepts. So if we have zero order overall, so this would be our overall order, is zero, we'd have time to the minus one. Again, I'm just gonna stick with molarity for a while to the one. Because the overall order minus one is actually <laughs> becomes positive. Now, if it was first order, again, we have time to the minus one, and we'd have, I'm gonna be explicit here, molarity to the zero. Right, because it's molarity to the minus overall order minus one. So that's molarity to the minus zero, which is molarity to the zero. Now, I put that in explicitly so you could see the pattern. I hope you realize that molarity to the zero is equal to one. So we really would not write it down that way, but I'm trying to show you the pattern. So then second would be time to the minus one, molarity to the minus one, and then third and so on. Hopefully, you've recognized the pattern to the minus two. So if you do it this way, you see that if we can link this number and that number, our units <clears throat> give us the overall order and vice versa. Okay, so we'll do more of that. I know it's not easy, uh, but we will do some more of that as we get moving along. And we already wrote this down on the previous slide. All right, we're off to do number eight on page seven, and I think it's gonna go much more smoothly with the backdrop of these rather longish videos. So until then, this is of course signing off.